rumor that if Tua doesn't get the much talked about title shot, maybe he opts instead for a big paycheck to fight against light heavyweight titleist Roy Jones moving up. Anything you can tell us about that? Uh, I don't know nothing about any of that. Uh, I'm sure uh, there are a lot of people who are looking to get a fight or get a crack at Roy Jones Jr. Uh, Roy runs from nothing and nobody, so if things are like they're supposed to be, you never know what might happen with Roy. Well. We never know exactly what's going to happen when Tua is in the ring, and uh, one of the odd things that's happened here is his weight. He comes in 13 pounds over the weight at which he fought Hasim Rockman in his last fight, 237, exceptionally large for Tua. What does that tell you? Could tell you that he didn't take this fight as serious as he took his last fight. Could tell you that maybe he wanted to be heavier for this opponent, which I doubt very seriously. So we'll see after about round four or five, if it lasts that long, uh, what that extra weight would mean. Well, the number will appear again here as we show you the tale of the tape for David Tua against Gary Bell. Tua, at 26 years old, still building his career, giving up four inches in height to Bell. He outweighs him by 13 pounds. Bell weighing 224, the exact weight at which Tua fought Rockman in December, and many believe that would be David Tua's best fighting weight. And look at the 14-inch reach advantage for Bell, which could be significant if he can use it the right way. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The David Tua, Gary Bell fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the Bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. And one quick word about David Tua's obvious beard, the rules say that if a beard can either cushion a blow or be used to scratch an opponent, it's illegal. In my opinion, if Gary Bell would have petitioned the commission, the commission probably would have made him shave. Jim. All right, and here's a chance for Gary Bell to try to make a name for himself. In his last fight, he won his fourth consecutive victory fighting in obscure Iowa against obscure opponents. Jim, this morning, Gary Bell was a 13 to one underdog. I checked with the legal bookmakers here 15 minutes ago. He is now close to a three to one underdog. The odds have plunged precipitously, perhaps from somebody just trying to take a big plunge to make the, to make a big uh, score or perhaps because of David to his weight and a closer look at Gary Bell who learned to fight in a boxing program in that famous prison in New York State his last four fights after winning his first 15 and losing a couple bought a couple of some two thousand dollar fights to restore himself his manager actually is a Vander Holyfield but Evander Holyfield is absent without leave from the lake here tonight. Holyfield wanted to manage him ever since Bell sparred with him before Holyfield's first date with Mike Tyson. David Tua, at his best, reminds people of Mike Tyson as a very young fighter. Similar in height, bobbing, weaving style, terrific left hook, much as was the case for Tyson in his early incarnation. Tua's only loss is to the much-celebrated Ike Ibeabuchi, whose talent makes him kind of the X factor in the heavyweight division. His psyche also qualifies to make him an X factor. Tua is regarded as a stable fighter, but what about this weight disparity? Here's a closer look, Larry. All right, we found out this weekend that his real name is not David Tua, it's David Leo. Tua is the first three initials of his father's first name. He has a, become a folk hero in New Zealand with a big song for him. And to help him with his stamina at this 6,200 feet uh, altitude, he eats garlic, which opens up your chest theoretically. The problem, Jim, is that he's obviously forgot to throw the pasta out. <laughs> And David Tua got a huge win seven months ago in his last fight against Hasim Rahman, but it was, in the eyes of many, a questionable win. After eight rounds, Rahman was clearly ahead on all three cards and seemed to be winning the fight in a runaway on two of the three scorecards. But then, at the end of the ninth round, Tua was lucky enough to catch Rahman with a left hook just after the bell sounded to end the round. That one right there. 
was the critical blow. It left Rachman wobbly and unsteady as the next round began, and Tua, unpenalized for the late blow, jumped on his opportunity to begin round 10, pounded Rachman against the ropes, and when The Rock was unable to punch back, the referee stepped in and stopped the fight in Tua's favor. That big technical knockout, his possible springboard to a title shot, he's got to keep the momentum going tonight. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caesars Tahoe here on the south shore of Lake Tahoe, Nevada, where tonight, main events in association with Miller Lite present professional boxing for your entertainment, sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The three judges assigned for this first bout will be Carol Castellano, Keith McDonald, and Dave Moretti, and when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Vic Draculich. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the USBA Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> Introducing first, heading out of the blue corner, wearing black with red and weighing in at 224 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one, 21 victories, 14 by knockout with only two losses. From Queens, New York, here is the challenger, Gary. Bring the pain back! And the one across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with white. He weighs 237 pounds, and also an outstanding record, consisting of 33 victories, including 28 knockouts, with only one defeat. And he is currently ranked number one in the world by the IBF. From Auckland, New Zealand, presenting the defending USPA heavyweight champion, David Terminator Jr. So the ring. All right, gentlemen, this is for the USPA heavyweight title. You've received your instructions in the dressing room. At this time, are there any questions? Any questions in a few seconds? Well, if it hits here, I'm not going to call. Fine. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? All right. Remember, obey my commands. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up now. Good luck to both of you. Okay. Jim, you often hear the expression in boxing, don't let the other guy get brave. What Tua has to do is not let the other guy feel that he is smart. He, he turned Rahman into a classic puncher boxer, something nobody thought of him as, because Rahman was able to take advantage of Tua's slow start. And although Bell has a reputation as an action fighter, he might be trying to do the same thing here. And having looked at what Rahman was able to accomplish against Tua, Bell says, I've thrown so many jabs in the gym, I feel like my left arm is going to fall off. For his part, Tua wants to start faster than is normally the case, and you see his combination-based effort to do that right there. But David Tua is really at his best, Roy Jones, when he gets to the body, so we'll be watching to see when he starts landing to the body with his heavy shot. There's also a little cut above the right eyebrow of Bell. It's starting to open up now and bleed more profusely. Now, this is a thunderous assault by Tua, Roy. A very big assault, but what has to happen here is Tua has to make sure he's not... He doesn't punch himself out. And already the doctor has been called into the ring to check Bell's eye. And I don't think that was a headbutt. That, was, that was the product of a right hand by Tua, unless I miss my guess. No, you're exactly right, Jim. Oh, man. Well, now they're going to say that I might be wrong about this because, boom, yep, there's a look at a butt that might well have caused that cut. We were both wrong. This could be good for Tua, though, because he got a chance to rest and regather himself. He threw a lot of punches then, and when you have the extra weight, sometimes that many punches can, can hinder you. Location of that cut and its apparent depth are going to pose a real problem for the people in Gary Bell's corner. Yeah, and it looks like a nasty gash right now, although it's not bleeding quite as much. Yeah, I think it's going to eventually cause problems with his vision in that eye. There's Tua going after it with a looping right hand over the top. And he lands another right cross to the jaw. And Bell's knees buckle. He almost goes down. Tua raining punches on Bell. And the referee stops the fight. Well, 
who, whoever took the 13 to 1 odds didn't make the killing that he was hoping to. <laughs> And Gary Bell, you're not in Iowa anymore. Those four wins in Iowa coming in were against opponents with a combined record of 47 wins, 110 losses, and three draws. That ain't like fighting David Tua. No, it's not. So David has his 34th victory and his 29th knockout. And by CompuBox numbers, Tua landed 28 of 42 power shots. Naturally, the folks in Bell's corner are going to point to the headbutt and say that was the critical factor, but Tua was already mounting a blistering assault prior to that headbutt. Yeah, there's not really much Gary Bell could do to get out of the way of those punches. He doesn't have the range or nothing else to stay away from Tua. Tua's a big puncher, and if he gets a chance to get off, you can forget it. This is uh, pretty reminiscent of Tua's other great fast start when he knocked out John Ruiz in 19 seconds. And here's how it all ended with Bell bleeding and Tua pounding right hands against his jaw in the corner. Normally the big weapon for Tua is the left hook. Bell was so conscious of the left hook that he left himself open for the right hand. That he totally forgot about defending against the right hand. You know, a fighter like Tua has to start relatively fast because if he allows the other fighter to get a rhythm, if he doesn't make him pay so that he'll get tired later in the fight, and he can find himself in the position that Tua has often found himself, which is having to play catch up and stop an opponent in the last two or three rounds. He doesn't want to see that, that position again anytime soon, I'm sure. Well, Especially we told being ranked number one. Yeah, good point. And we told you that his best Tua reminds you of the young Mike Tyson. This was a fast start reminiscent of the early Tyson. Right, right there, that eye had gotten, gotten a lot of blood on it, but that still doesn't explain why Bell never got the left hand up to stop to his overhand right. Anybody, Lennox Lewis, Hornetfield, let's do it. There you go. You hear Ronnie Shields in the background saying anybody. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the quick one. Ladies and gentlemen, at 79 seconds, the official time into round number one. Referee Dick Blackwood will talk about the winner. By knockout victory, his record now 34 victories, 29 KOs, and he is still the USBA heavyweight champion, the Terminator, David Cuba. Being a little overweight doesn't bother you much if you only fight a minute and 19 seconds. And if, especially if you're able to go off and get off those kind of punches on an opponent. Tua landed some big punches right away, and that made it very difficult for Bell to ever get into this fight. You know, to be honest, he might have landed the most decisive blows while we were still setting up the fight because he came rocketing out in the first 20 seconds and landed a couple of big left hooks. Yes, he did. So, another look at Tua, and now let's go to Larry Merchant, who's in the ring with him. Larry? Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, uh, David. Um, what took you so long? Um, first of all, I say to all, what do you need that longer? And uh, what did you just say? Well, I said, you know, thank God, everything worked out great, and I dedicate this uh, this uh, this fight here to uh, uh, soul brother Mark Tuine. He rest in peace, brother. Uh, all, right. all right. This started, David, with a cut that was caused by a butt. Did you feel that? I mean, were you both coming forward? And you take a look at it here and describe to us what you see. Well, I knew he was he was coming he was coming in. I, I actually didn't think he was going to come in, you know, to fight. You know, I actually thought he was going to come out with the style of, of a rock man, you know, throwing the jab and moving around. But, you know, I was surprised. And therefore, you know, I, I'm, I'm a guy that stays low, that use my weight, use my legs. And, uh, you know, those things happen. But um, I'm happy that everything worked out great. All right, tell us, David, in the past you've had some uh, early knockouts, sometimes against some pretty good fighters, but on other occasions you've started rather slow and given your opponents a chance to, f to find a rhythm and to feel that they can outwit you. D do you want to change that now? Yeah. I told you yesterday, you know, at the HBO meeting that, uh, you know, I, I guarantee you this is going to be a different David Tua, and I came out and I proved it. I'm number one in the world, and I'll fight anybody. anybody. Fight anybody. Holyfield, Lewis, anybody. 
All right, David, let me raise the subject of your weight. Obviously, you weren't feeling that this man was a serious threat as Rachman because when you fought Rachman, you weighed 13 pounds less. Is that a dangerous game to get into? No, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm 26 now, and I feel that at this late stage of my, of my life and my career that my body's matured. You know, I put on more muscle and less fat, and I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm still got my, my quickness, I'm still got my power, and, and that's, that's all that matters. All right, it, it, it may be all that matters in the ring, but, but we have the memory of an outstanding fighter, Riddick Bowe, who weakened himself by going up and down in weight severely. Uh, I've heard you went up as high as 275, 280 after the Rahman fight. Uh, it, it, can this be a problem down the road for you? To be totally honest, I can't speak for the other fighters. You know, David Tua is David Tua, and uh, whatever makes David Tua feel feel better and, and feel comfortable, you know, I got to do what I got to do. How often do you want to fight to make sure you retain your mandatory challenge ranking? Well, Ronnie and Lou and everybody, hey, let's <laughs> let's get somebody, let's get anybody. Do you want to fight somebody better than your opponent tonight? Or are you freezing the ball, as we say in America, and, and just holding on to your ranking? Bring it on, bring it on. You know, uh, my job, like I've always said, my job is to fight, be the best I can be, and, and, and do better in every fight. And talk to Lou, talk to Ronnie, talk to Kevin, and, you know, th those are the guys that make the matches. I got to go out there and perform, and, uh, hey, he just had operation on his knee, and uh, I got to help you out a little. <laughs> Larry, and, and Roy Jones says he, he wants to step into the heavyweights. Roy Jones wants to fight. He's ready to fight with Roy Jones. I don't, I don't know if he'll be that eager after watching this. <laughs> Jim? <laughs> I don't know if he was that eager before watching this, to be totally honest with you. Final punch stat numbers in this fight. David Tua throwing 43 punches in a minute and 19 seconds. His handlers wanted him to be very busy. At that rate, he would have thrown more than 90 punches in the round. That qualifies as very busy. And when you land 65% and you throw the kind of punches that do a th the Tua throws, you are going to do some damage. And that's what he did against Gary Bell. And Roy Jones, in the heavyweight division, more than in any other division, getting a title shot requires that you build a fan base. Nothing sings to fans like first round knockouts. So this was big for David. Well, this was very big, uh, very big for David. I think it's good for anybody looking on for David because that would give people an incentive to say that, hey, David is good enough to go out and get a shot at a world title. Actually, I think a David to a Lennox Lewis fight would be a very interesting fight. I mean, very interesting. Even David to a Holyfield fight, but more so David to a Lennox Lewis than Holyfield. Well, I think he brings something that people want to see, which is straightforward aggression. I mean, this is not a guy who's going to try to hide against Lewis or anybody. No, he's not going to run from nothing. He's going to be right there for you all night, and you can get whatever you want from him. All so right. if you come there, there's a plan, but you have to be willing to execute that plan. I'll leave you alone about your plans. You're the my light, plan. heavyweight, or the light plan. heavyweight champion. My plans are world. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larry, your uh, final assessment of David Tua's heavyweight title shot audition. Well, his job is to market himself as well as to stay in shape. He certainly marketed himself tonight. He's weighed in this range before, but I I'm concerned. You know, I spoke to some of his advisors before the fight. Uh, and as one of them put it, uh, he doesn't lie, cheat, or steal. He doesn't uh, drink, smoke, or abuse women, but he sure likes to eat. <laughs> and that can come back and bite you later on. Let's take a look at uh, some of the other young heavyweights who are hovering in the same competitive neighborhood as Tua. Well, of course, there's Michael Grant. Uh, I believe when Michael Grant uh, fights a better class of fighter, uh, fighters who come to win, you'll see the kind of Michael Grant people expect of him. A lot of people think Abayabuchi is right there, perhaps the best of all the young heavyweights out there, but, it, but he's getting the reputation of being unstable and not trusting of people outside of the ring, difficult to make fights for. Asim Rahman is still in the picture. Kirk Johnson is still in the picture. And here's a newcomer, Vitaly Klitschko, who is the brother of the gold medalist in the heavyweight division in 1996 but who is impressing people more than the gold medalists right now.
Yeah, and Klitschko a few weeks ago in London put on a stunning performance. At least it was stunning to his opponent, Herbie Hyde, fighting for one of those bogus non-essential titles. Klitschko didn't land any punches in the first round, then in the second round delivered two right hands in a row. Hyde somehow got up from the second left hand, but was quickly down, or the second right hand, I should say, but was quickly down again. It was a second round TKO for Klitschko. He hit Herbie Hyde so hard with that second right hand that Hyde bled out his left ear. You don't often see it. And I you know, the, the, the new generation of big, powerful men in the heavyweight division. But to tell you the truth, even in that 10 or 15 uh, second clip, it looked a little bit uh, Frankensteiny in there, a little mechanical. I don't think you heard his marketing <laughs> power with that. All right, so 